Welcome to Attican Plays Railway Empire. All right, welcome back to another Railway Empire video. In this one, we're going to do something a little different. We've played through the entire campaign. We have uh, done a couple of the difficult free mode uh, uh, setups. We've done some scenarios. But I'm seeing in, in reading through YouTube posts and, and looking at other sites and, and what have you that um, people are struggling still, I think, with how to lay track, how to design the uh, system, how to control the, your trains, how to keep from having total uh, merging messes, how to merge lines, etc. And I also noticed that one of the most viewed of my videos is the old how to merge lines. Now that was done uh, with the pre-release beta. They're, they've done some changes to the uh, uh, mostly just the appearance of the track. It's much more easy to see what's happening now when you're laying your track and your signals, but uh, I think the mechanics are exactly the same. So at any rate, I wanted to do one, a uh, kind of a little how-to. So we're just going to call this uh, uh, Track Layout 101. And we're just going to go grab uh, in sandbox mode so we don't have to worry about money or anything like that. And I want to find a place where we've got some, actually, I think the east, if that's the one that has Toledo and... Yeah, it's Toledo. We're, we're going to play up here in this Toledo, Grand Rapids, because that's a nice flat spot. It's easy to see everything. You can do the same thing in the mountains, and the mountains actually get in the way. It's hard to visualize what's going on. So we're going to go up here to this nice flat, simple area and play around Your up there. Is over. All right, we'll use the general. It really doesn't matter who we use, but um, since money's not an object. Um, <clears throat> all right, so in let's start mode, out. Have unlimited cash and no competitors. The task list and research chart are deactivated, too. <laughs> okay, and <laughs> sorry, I'm, I'm chuckling because you just can't get away from those guys talking. Okay, so I know there are other videos out there, and there are, I think, even the, the developers and, and distributors have put out some things to help with just basic layout of tracks and stuff like that. So what I want to do is show you kind of the, how do you think about where you want to lay your track, how you want it to connect your systems, and then we'll get into the mechanics of how to do it and and the different ways that you can set it up. So the first thing that, that I would look at on any map I have, uh, any scenario, any, whatever, and obviously your scenario drives what you do to a great extent. But if you're out there and you've got your choice, what you want to find in the early going is a city that produces meat and a city that produces beer. The reason being that when you look at the when you look at the uh, the demand for a city in the early going, they need these items right here. These first six, they need wheat. They don't necessarily need cattle unless they have the meat industry in there, but they need the wheat. They need corn. They need logs. They need the meat, and they need beer. And those are the things that, that they grow from. And then, as you can see, the list gets bigger and bigger. By the way, I have on my website, I have a, um, a, a, a couple of different charts that would help with this. One is just a simple chart that shows this stuff. And then there's another one that's a, a really um, a two, three, and four city cluster uh, where it shows what are all the things you'd need and how much you would need to produce to produ to support a, a cluster so and a cluster of course if you're not familiar with my videos that's kind of my concept for how i do city building and growing and uh, is i set things up in a little cluster like for example if we had meat here beer here we could do a two city cluster and have these two support each other we would bring goods into the little tiny network that we had to support their growth, and these two would, would have a little symbiotic relationship and would grow. A three-city cluster, we would, well, naturally bring in a third city. And then there are different ways that we can connect them up. But I want to just show you the kind of basic, there's two, to me, there's two basic ways to connect connect um, stations and, and to build your connections. One is, and this is my preferred approach, and it I think, I, I believe it's the developer's preferred approach too, because if you go to the Civil War in the um, campaign, in Mission 4, the Civil War, this is how they do it. When you, we inherit that already set up situation, this is how they do it. They build what I call point to point, which means I come into a specific uh, platform, of course, 
then I double double track and then close it off at that platform. So this particular line could only possibly go between track number one. And I've said this before, but they're numbered one, uh, I need something. They're numbered one, two, three, and four out from this from the building. So the depot, the actual station, then track one, track two, track three, track four. So this particular line could only possibly go from track one in Grand Rapids to track one in Toledo because that's the only place it connects. And then, then you would set up supply towers somewhere, typically in the middle of the line, but you could do them right at the beginning or where, however, there's various ways to do that too. There's just way too many things to cover here, but at any rate. Then you wanna set one way, kind of make each side of the track one way. Reason being, it's just like a road. These cars, these, uh, if we wanna run more than one train, they've gotta be able to pass each other. The only way they can pass each other is if they all consistently uh, drive on the same side so that they make a nice loop and they can go backwards and forwards, okay? I know that's really simplistic, I apologize. And I don't mean to insult your intelligence, but uh, you know, sometimes you gotta just say the simple truth, the simple facts. So, that gives us a line. Now we could run trains back and forth between that and just while we're at it and we're in blocking and tackling mode, how many trains could we run right now without having a problem? Now there's an easy way to figure that out is figure out all the places that a train could stop and subtract one from it. So a train, if we had a train, imagine trains running back and forth between on this line. There could be one in the station, then, then one could leave the station and go out and he could stop here at the, at the supply tower going, going this way toward the bottom of our screen toward Toledo. So that's two places, oh wait. He could also stop right here, I missed that one. He could stop at that um, signal, so one, two, three, another signal, four, five, another signal, six is the station again, seven is that signal going backwards, back the other way, eight, nine, ten. So he could, so there are ten places that a train could stop on this line and you could run nine trains safely on this line, and they, they, would run, they would run happily. They would not run efficiently because they would be awfully crowded, but you could do it. In fact, let's just do it. We set up a line between these two. It doesn't matter what kind of line it is, really. And we'll run, eh, whatever, Philadelphia's. Two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now that's a lot of trains. I think that's what I counted. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep, that's right. Now the quicker way to count this, by the way, is count your stations. That's two. Your 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 directional signals on either end. There's one on each end, that's two more, that's four. Your tower makes two is six, and then in any sets of two signals adds two more. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten minus one is nine. So these nine trains can run happily along. They'll probably have to stop a lot. This will not be a super efficient, it won't be a bad line, but, it'll, but every time there's a breakdown, they're gonna, well, speaking of that, let's put, let's put maintenance on so we don't have too many breakdowns. We will have some just random. Okay, so so you can see they're just flying right along and they'll, they'll go on forever. They run as long as we run. If we had a 20 year game, they, they would run for 20 years happily, chugging along, just uh, making us money. And they actually would make pretty good money. So you, that's what you could do. And just to show you, we're gonna throw one more train on there. All it takes is one to break break the whole system. I'm going to copy one more line. See, look at, the, look at the money these guys are making. And now let's see what happens. Everybody's stopping. Everybody's stopping. Up. 
bingo, we're all dead. Now, why are we dead? Because there's no place for a train to go. Every train is looking ahead. Every train always looks ahead one block. A block is the name for a section of track between two stopping points. So a stopping point, again, in this game would be, or I guess even in real life, a tower. These towers have signals in them. So it's every set of signals. There's a signal here. There's a signal here. There's a signal here, and the station itself has a signal. So every where there's a signal is a place that the train could stop, and then between the signal it's at and the next one is it has to have clear, completely clear track or it won't move. So these guys now will sit here forever. They will literally sit here forever. So if we just take one train out of this little loop, bingo, everything works again. Now we're back to nine trains. Now, let's go back and put the 10th train back in and see what happens. See what else we, there is to do. All right. If we put the 10th train back in, he's waiting to get out. As soon as he gets out, we'll have a total mess again. Here he comes. They're, they're all starting to stop. Bingo, bingo, stop, stop, stop. Here comes our errors. Okay, we're dead in the water again. Now, the other way, just to show you how this works, the other way to fix that or to allow them to keep going, if we just put even just one more signal in, see now they're moving again. Why? Because they have one space they can move into. Now this is an incredibly inefficient line. They're just going to keep like catching each other and crawling and this guy breaks down and there's a backup forever. Horrible, horrible design, but you can see it does work. And if we put another one in the other direction, then it would be slightly better because now we've got one extra spot. But the bottom line here is we've got too many trains running in this, in this uh, space. It's just not going to be efficient. You would actually make more money or certainly as much running maybe six trains or eight trains, but certainly not nine or ten like we have now. But again, this works. This could work and go on and on and on and on. Okay? Now, let's just look real quickly at, at the optimizer. <laughs> this is fun. I've shown this in another video, but I want to show you again. Let us say that we had these lined up, and then we said, okay, I want to run a line from here, and I think this will work because I think this is closer. All right, from here to here, all right? So you might want to ride it, run another line for some freight or to get more traffic or whatever, so I'll build another line. And then I say, okay, let's take off. Let's run. Where do our trains go? Look what they did. They all jumped over to this track. And not only that, but they can't go anywhere because now what's going to happen? This guy is over here. He can't go anywhere because that whole track is blocked. See, there's no blocks there. There's all, it's all one big long block, so nobody can go anywhere. And what happened? The route optimizer said, you know what, you now have, these trains are trying to go from this station in Toledo to this station in Grand Rapids, and you've now created a quicker, a shorter route. I'm going to take it. They don't care if it works or not, they are going to take it. So off they go to this new route. Now all these trains that we had piled over here have jumped to this line. Now I do believe if we just delete this line, watch what will happen. Look at this, now we have a working system again. Why? Because they jumped back, because the shortest route they could find is this one. So, that tells us a whole bunch of things. One is that if you're going to build multiple lines like that between stations, you need to think about doing this. You need to think about building your line so that you say, okay, Mr. Train, I want you to go. See how it only has one choice? Well, now you need to make it explicit and say, okay, you can only leave from track number one. You can only leave from track number one in Grand Rapids. So now, in fact, I'm going to do that. I just fixed one train. Now watch what happens when I put that, our little offending line back in here. Okay, because we agree we've got a working system now, even though we've got a pile up and we've got a, a breakdown. We've got a working system again, but watch what happens now that I, or did I do it? 
when I put that line back in. Now watch, watch what happens to our line again. Okay, now notice we've got one train running over here. Guess which one that is? That's the one we told to run over there. Now, what's that one? That's the first one who came out. But when he gets up here and turns back around, what's going to happen? Whoops. Now we're all blocked again. So we've got out of our nine or ten trains or whatever we're up to now. Where are we up to? Ten. We've got ten trains. One of them is doing the right thing. Why? Because we explicitly told him to run from track one to track one. So when you're setting up lines, you have to think ahead and think, am I going to add lines? If I am, I've got to tell them where to, where to go, and I've got to tell them where, what platforms to use and give them commands for it, so to speak. And if you do that, you won't have a problem, because if we had set up all those lines and said one-to-one -one on the very first one we did and then cloned them, that's what they would do, and they would all run happily forever after, okay? So that's route optimization. There are times, actually, by the way, you can actually use it to your advantage, but it's very rare. And notice how this one train by himself, instead of having 10 trains, we got one train, and look at him. He's running full, and he's running very efficiently, and he's making a ton of money. He's making 4000 a week. We were making maybe a 800 to a 1000 a week on the other trains. So it was better to have more, but it wasn't better to have that many more. So you've got to kind of figure out your what's your optimum number for, for these tracks in order to really make the money. Okay, so enough of that. Now... Let's, uh, what else? Let's just delete this line and go back to our nice little working. Now we're going to have a big crowd over there because they're going to go right back over and everybody's going to happily run on that line. Okay. So there's, there's, there's a couple of things. Track layout. Okay, let's do a different type of track layout. The other kind you can do if you're into building switches and all that stuff is you can build a line that goes like this as an example. We could run a line, and let's say we run it into here, just to keep it away from the other guys. And I'm not going to be too fussy about what it looks like, but there we go. And then we say, okay, let's run another line right next to it out of the other platform. And we can run a line like so. This is probably more how you would envision how we think of, quote, real world, unquote, is having these double, a track, a line coming out of every, every platform. Instead of having these blank ones like we've got. So you've got a track coming out. And then we, and you'll notice how I did that. Um, I set a line that went from here and went across and then right up in front of it and went back across the other way. What you can't do, let me show you. You can't build one side and then go back and do, you can't do that. You can't do the cross. You can't do the the X or diamond or I've seen it called a bunch of things in other railroad games or other players. Uh, you can't do that, but you can do this kind where you go out and then back. So what you do on a setup like that is then set a switch out here and say, okay, we're going on this side. And then on down the road, you'd set up your switch that said, over here, we're driving on the right. And now you would have a line that could come in and could go to either one of these two platforms, right? Now, let's just see something about that. Let's do the same thing on this end. Oh, I goofed up. <laughs> let's be thankful we don't have to pay for any of this. Uh, I goofed up. You delete it back to there because that's the block. Okay, let's go. Boom. I actually missed the station, got them one off. There, now they're together. <clears throat> Pardon me. So now we have to build our little our little uh, switch, our crossover, whatever you want to call it. Like so. Put our signal in to say, go that way. We've already got one to go the other way. We could put a tower in. We can. So let's just keep this one simple. So we've got, now how many trains could we run on this little setup? You got the stations or two. You got one stop there and one stop there, signal and a signal. So one, two, three, four. And this tower hits it in both directions. So you got five, six. So you got six 
minus one, we could run five trains, and that's all we'd need to run five trains happily, happily ever after. So let's just show that. And I want to show you a couple of things about that. One, two, three, four, and five. Now notice I didn't tell it any, give it any directions as to which platform to use. So let's just see what route it takes. Notice it's coming in, it's going over to this station over here, which happens to be number four. And on this end, it's going in on number four as well. Now, is there any logic behind it? I don't know. I haven't really studied it to say, okay, what's it definitely going to do? I don't know. But what you can do with a situation with one like this is this is a this is a better setup if you think you're going to run through trains. So if I'm going to run a train, like if I knew I was going to run a Louisville train, I wanted to run it through Indianapolis to Toledo, which you could do under certain circumstances. It's not common, but you could do that. Then you could have a, have it come in, and you would want it to hook up back here. In fact, let's let's just yeah, let's just do that. Let's go back down here. Let's go to Louisville. Okay, let's just ride. Let's just do that same track configuration, that kind of double track deal, and run it in the back end here and use the same two tracks that these guys are using. And we don't need to let's keep it in here where we can see what's going on. Okay, so there's one way. And we'll go back the other. Okay. And we'll set up give it a tower in the middle. And we better give this one some maintenance too. And uh, if we give it some signals, oops, what I didn't do, didn't do my crossovers. So, okay, it's <laughs> a good point. If I ran a line now, let's just run five, five trains here. And let's just set our signals. Well, first of all, Let's just set our signals. So we've got we've got track going each way, right? Well, let's see what happens if I try to do a line. Notice that I can't, if I pick Louisville, it won't even go to Indianapolis. And why is that? Because we know that you can only go out, and it's a one-way, you've got a one-way drag here. Eh, where's my signals? There we go. I can only go one way or the other, but I have no way of getting from one station to the other in the middle of my route. These trains will jump uh, platforms if for route optimization or if they're between runs or something, but when they're in the middle of a run, they will not jump platforms for you. So you can't just run it up there and say, oh, well, you go in on this one, but you want to come out on the other one. They have to be connected in some way for that to happen. So that's why you have to build your little, little uh, crossing your your switches in order to allow them to, to cross hopefully that makes sense so now we've got this line that won't run now we could potentially make it run actually if we took this guy and just took off that uh, red part and just made it a two-way that's a two-way street now let's see if we can run a line from here to here yes we can but the deal with that is, if you look at his line, it's all on one side. So when he gets up to there, if I wanted to run a second train, they couldn't go anywhere. Because they'd both be looking ahead and saying, you know what, there's no, there's no place to go. There's no place for me to go. So there's some real basics of, of, of uh, track laying. Um, I strongly recommend, if you want to control your game and control your way you're playing, that you use this kind of a configuration right here with the... Trains coming into a single platform, you know which platform they're going to use, 
and on both ends and you can and you and you can count your signals and know how many trains you can safely run and you don't pile other trains on there you don't don't try to be too efficient in this game if you try to run the whole i want to run this beautiful trunk line that runs all the way from pittsburgh to grand rapids and everybody hooks into it will not work you will get too many trains on there you will get screwed up run dedicated lines to whatever it is you need to do but be aware of that optimizer and be aware that you may need to set these up. It might be, be a good habit to get in the habit of going, when I set up the, this, this train line, let's take this guy right here. Ah, what have I done? Let's take that guy right, oh, I see. Let's go right there, take that guy. If I was setting up his line, you might want to get in the habit of, of saying, I want you to go explicitly from that guy right there. Even though it's only one possibility, you have to tell it, I want you to explicitly use that so that if you add other lines, uh, you won't mess yourself up. So there's there's your basic. I would strongly recommend this kind of a line. Okay, I'm going to keep going. I may break this up into multiple pieces, but I want to keep going and talk about now, how do I merge lines? Let us say that I'm in a situation where I want to, to bring another train into this line. So uh, let's just say, and I'm going to build another station just because... I forgot to, um, since I didn't explicitly name those, I'm going to have a hopping problem with my route optimization. So let's put another station in, and that raises the point. That hopping, that optimization, is not between cities. It's not figuring out there's a quicker way from Toledo to Grand Rapids. It's only between stations. So it's saying, when I built that other line over here, it's saying there's a quicker route from this station right here to this station right here. But it is not saying anything about the two cities. So if I had a line over here, here I'll, I'll just prove it to you. I'll build a line over here to run to that guy. And our trains will not jump. See how they're not jumping? They're still merrily going on their way. And remember, there's only one of these that we've explicitly said stay over there. The others could potentially jump, but they won't. Oh, I didn't even build the line. <laughs> there. <laughs> of course it didn't, didn't jump. But see, they're not jumping. Why? Because this is between different stations. And even if I had a line, and just to, just to show you kind of the whole deal here, let's say I had a line that went from here What if I had a line that went from here? Now let's do it an easier way. I didn't mean to delete it all, but we don't really care. From here over to that guy. The big ugly jumping line. How am I gonna get this to jump? There. Will it jump that? No, it won't. Again, because now it's from this station to that station. It's not from the station they originated from before. So, okay, I'm beating a dead horse now, but I think you get the idea. So watch out for that optimizer. Now, let's merge a lane. Let us say that we had a lane. We set up a lane, and, it, uh, um, and it's going to be, say, to get our... It could be a good design would be this is going to be the line that you're going to bring supplies into these two cities. So all your raw materials are going to come through through here. Now, how do I do that without just plugging them into the city? If I want to, I could do it like this. Let's say I have a station out here bringing in wheat to my two cities. I could run a line down like, whoops down like so, and I could say, okay, I want to merge and go to Grand Rapids. So what you do is you come down, and this is the three-step process for merging lines. You connect to the first one, accept it. You go right in front of that connection, you bump over to the next line, you accept it. Then you check your signals, and I, I should have done this first. Let me put signals in this line so that it's a running line.
Okay, now, now notice, notice what happened. I've set this up as a one way in both directions, but if you'll notice where we intersected, it got interrupted. And why is that? Because we now have a line that can run down like this. It needs to go both directions, and it could, could potentially come over there and go in both directions. So it's messed up our signals. So when you, and let's go backwards. Let's back up just a little bit. Okay. Now let's say we had that line going. And... It's interesting. That's interesting. Just by having it touch it. Okay, now I've got that was interesting. All right, we've got a we've got a yeah, see it's it just having it get on there one time. When that when that line got on there, it actually screwed up our direction. So that's interesting. That's, uh, well, that was worth seeing. All right. So now we've got a, a basic line. Let's even put a tower in. Okay. So we've got a line that, that could potentially go to Toledo or Grand Rapids. We want to merge. We come down like this. We kiss the first line we come to. We connect to that first line. We accept it. We start right in front of that point, bump over to the other line, or, and this is assuming it's a two-way track. Oh, and I, you know why those things, I just saw why that things were still messed up? Because we had this crossover right here, and that's what was messing it up before. Well, now we have a crossover right there. So let's look at our line and see how it's, it's two-way. Well, now it's working just fine. Now, well, oh, oh, and now why is this working just fine? Because now we have this signal right out here in front of it that's telling it we still want this to be a one way. So it has defined this as one way this way. We've defined this as one way that way. And what all that's going to tell us is that all we got is this little tiny bit. I don't even know if you can see it right there in the middle. This part right here is actually two way because they have because you have to be able to cross over. And actually, right now it's a two-way. It could become a one-way if we, if, we if we did it just right with how we exited. Okay, but at any rate, the idea of merging is, and let me go back. I'm going to take that off. I'm going to take this guy off. We're going to do it one more time. Okay, when we merge, and let's, Alan, we're going to delete that crossover. Let's see if we have signal. Okay, there we got a full line, right? As if nobody's ever merged. We come in and merge. And what's our process? We kiss. We merge. We accept. Go right in front of it. Bump over. Accept. And then we check our signals. Now our signals, as you can see, have gotten a little bit messed up. Because this one section, this section in through here is not coming back because it's been interrupted by this. This back here is working correctly, but where we interrupted it, it is not. All we have to do is go up here, find our next signal facing us, and say, don't drive over here, and there we go. Now we've got signals that work, we've got a merge that works, and a train could come out of here and go into Grand Rapids just fine. And he could come back this way. Now, we've only got a one, uh, one line here, so you can only run how many trains? One. Now, two ways for us to complete this merge. We can either, to really make it useful, it's, it's complete right now, it would work just fine. There's two ways that we could finish this off. One way would be to double track back like this. So we would double track, like back to the station or however far we wanted to, right? Now, I should have finished off, by the way, on the signaling. When you have this guy coming down, you want to set a signal at as far down as you can and say, go down as far as you can so that you can wait to merge. And then, and notice, by the way, see how we've got a red here? We have an error here. 
Now, why is that? Because I set this signal down here and that it has actually caused both of these to be going this direction. So we would want a properly done one would have a signal up here that said, no, you're going to go that direction. Now, why is it screwed up now? What's the deal? Oh, here's the deal. We only had, we put this down too far and you can't get, because this is a one way, there's no way for a train coming back here to come back and get to this part. So it's telling us you can't even get to this part because you could never reach it. So what you really want to do, if you're going to have a merge like that, is set your signal back here and say this is one way, this is two way, it has to be two way or you couldn't go on and come off. And then you set another signal up here far enough out to make sure that an entire train can get out of the way so you don't block the traffic this way. So that gives you that gives you a merge that works and this is what I would call kind of uh, uh, connecting them back off the line. So this is kind of an off the line connection. Now let's talk about the other way to do it. Just a variation of the same thing. What we're going to do now is we're going to give it a another ramp for coming on. So what you do is you just come down and kiss you this line and run down like so. And there we go. And what this is doing, uh, I've got too much curve in here. All right. Many, many times, I can, well, we've got such a tight turn. I usually don't have that tight a turn into it. Usually more of an arcing turn, but no matter. Now we've got another line over here that's our actual merge. Oh, and I see what's wrong. <laughs> I'm using too many examples here. Okay, let us say we hadn't run that right-hand lane. So our right-hand lane now is going to come down like this. See how it'll kiss it. Kiss, kiss, kiss. It's going to come down. You just keep going down until you find a nice green spot like that. And now we've built a line to go down and do our merge. So now, in this configuration, our right-hand lane here is our actually our merging lane. So it's going to do the merge to go that way. And then our return lane is going to come up this way, do the little crossover, and go up that side. So we would want to set our signals. We would want to set down here. Go down here as far as you can and wait for permission to get on board, right? You see how everything's working all nicely? Everything looks good. You can come back. Everything's cool. And then make sure you have a signal up here. It doesn't have to be this far, but far enough up so that a train coming off could get completely out of the way. I mean, in fact, that might not be far enough. But make sure you can get your, tra your train completely off the track so that he doesn't get in some situation where he's stuck, in the, stuck there blocking traffic. So that's your basic merge and to do it in the other direction, uh, there's lots of different ways we could come off here. We could actually come off of this, go, hey, go on over there. And then from there, go on over here. And now we're going to come down. If we gave ourselves enough room, which I don't know if we did. Yeah, we did. Okay. We'll come down and merge going this way. And then we're going to cross over, and then we're going to check our signals. Always, and notice, got a little mess up here. Why is that? So we'll go down here and find, hmm, why is that messed up? It thinks this is a two-way street now, and that's because of this. So let's go ahead and finish off our, our, uh, our merger. I don't want to do this one. Okay, I want this one to come down and merge like so and go back 
and merge like so. So now I've got a line that can come down and come down and a crossover and drive on the right. And when they come back, they'll go out that way. So we would set our signal on this side to say, come down here as far as you can and wait, always going that way. And then our, our one on the other side, no problem. It'll come back and it'll go up and say, I can go all the way up to there. I've got clear running. Now, we still have a little section here that thinks it's a two-way street, and it really isn't. And so we would want to set a signal. What are we missing? We would want to set a signal to say, you know what? You can come down here, make sure this area is clear right here, and go that way. Now we've got now we've got a nice looking line. Now we've got these beautiful except for this right here. Oh, that could be what's wrong. We need to tell this section. Oh, oh, we actually built a merger with our own merging line here. This is getting pretty complicated. I apologize if this is getting too complicated. But notice now we've got that straightened out. You can come off and go to the right. And now the only thing we've got is the crossover section. And we actually probably could have fixed all that with this right here. There we go. Now we've got now we've got lines going every which way. You can merge any way you want to. You can do whatever you like. Now that was a complicated one. I apologize. That was too complicated. Let's do a nice simple one. Let's see if I can make this simpler for you. Okay, a simpler way to merge. Same concept. I'd like to be a little farther away. Let's find one. Here, let's do, let's do cattle. So we have a little more room. Okay, a, ni a nice simple one. A nice simple one. And we're going to turn to the left because they're the more difficult. A nice simple one. We come down. We make our turn. We come in and we merge with the line. We pop over. We accept. And we check our signals. And we see that this side has for, is not... Uh, cooperating anymore so we just say okay you're going that way now that would actually work as a merger right there if all we needed to go was that way and run one train and the simplest way for you to do this so that you don't get drive yourself crazy is just double track back here double track the section that's back here off the merge set your signals Then go down here and say, I want you to go all the way down to the end of it, as far as you can go, as far as it'll give me a section. Point it the way you want it to go. Say, stop. And there we go. Now you'll notice we've got this one little section that's two-way. That's because you have to go on and off through that one piece of track. But everything else works beautifully. See how nicely everything is flowing? And we can prove it. We'll let our train just take off flying. And in fact, we'll just... Um, set up a line and run a train down here now this will be interesting we've got too many trains on this so what's going to happen because we merged into this what's going to happen do you think when we run a train actually i've already set it to zero <laughs> it won't even go to that one <laughs> that one doesn't demand any meat so we're going to set it with none required so it'll run but let's see what happens when it actually merges or if it ever does. Did you notice how everybody stopped? Well, they're certainly slowing down. Let's see. Do we have a problem yet? We certainly got a lot of traffic. They're still moving. How many trains do I have out here? I have 10 trains running. Oh, that's right. We put a bunch of extra signals down. But look at this, how long this is taking. 
he he's just he may sit there forever. He may never go. This is why when you can, you want dedicated lines. This is why you'll see me building. Um, you'll see six or eight tracks abreast running back and forth because I don't want to get in a situation where, oh gosh, I'm just sending this one train. Why can't he get in there? Because this tra track is so busy that every he can't get a he can't get a free shot. He just this this track right in here is never free because there's always somebody coming one way or the other. He he could he'll sit there forever. So what you want to do from a design point of view is avoid I'm going to get rid of the train. Avoid this altogether and say okay. Whenever you can avoid any kind of line merge and go straight to your destination. Now, if we ran that little simple line, you can run all day, no problem. In fact, we could run one train with just that and a supply tower. And assuming there's, uh, yeah, there's uh, maintenance out that end, now we could run one train. He could go from there to there and just run his little empty loads all day long. And why is he empty? Because this guy doesn't need cattle. There's no demand, zero demand, so he's never going to try to ship any. Now, if we flip this around, if we flip this around and run down here and hook into Toledo, that same deal, and we change this guy's line. Don't go to Grand Rapids anymore. Go to Toledo. Let's see what he does. He's going to go back. Well, now he's probably lost. Here he goes. He's coming back. And sure enough, look at that. He's loading up cattle. Why is he taking cattle? Because Toledo has demand for cattle. So he's going to take it. And he will keep doing that as long as Toledo has demand. And if Toledo, Toledo has, meets a point where there is no demand for it, they've got, they're full, he will quit running until they need it again. All right, we've covered a lot of stuff here. I hope this hasn't been too boring, but um, we've basically talked about base, some of the basics of track setup. We've talked a little bit about merging. We've talked about how you don't want to get these super clogged lines and super busy lines because um, they really... Uh, they're, this is not efficient. See how all these guys are stopping so much? And look at that. Our utilization is only 50%. Yet, at 50%, we are just bogged down. We're stopping all the time. In fact, if we looked at one of these trains, look at this. Waiting time, 55%. Half of his time is spent waiting. So you do not want these big, super busy, hyper busy lines. You want dedicated lines. So what would be a much better setup here that would just make tons of money would be having maybe six trains on this line, having a dedicated line running our wheat in over here to the beer, having a dedicated line like this running our, our cattle over to the meat, and then letting these trains, if these were passengers, uh, they wouldn't run them back and forth, but we could have a little line running them back and forth. We haven't even gotten into warehouses and all that stuff. Uh, that's that's a, a topic for another day. But... Um, I, I think basically we've covered some good things here that can that can help you kind of overcome some of your snafus. I apologize if I got too complicated with that one, although I do like that. I think that's a cool looking that's a cool looking intersection right there, and it, and it would work perfectly well. Let's just let's just see if it would. Let's run a line from here to here, and it should fill up because they need wheat. And we would normally have a second station for this, but let's learn a line from here to here. And do you think it'll fill up? And the answer is, yes, it will. And why is that? There's no beer down here because everybody needs wheat. So that Toledo line is going to fill up as well. And you notice they're running down here and everything's working just fine and they'll go back and forth. And if we happen to have a line, let's just say we had a line between Toledo and... 
Grand Rapids that was actually going to haul our freight for us because we've got passengers over here and it's going to have to interact with this uh, merge. It'll work just fine because, and see it's taking the meat we make here and taking the meat to Grand Rapids. That's how this city helps that city grow. When it gets up there, I have, predict that it'll grab a bunch of beer and bring the beer back here to Toledo. And now both these cities will be growing because they're getting some goods. So he unloads his meat. And look at that. He grabs beer. What a surprise. So you can see the symbiotic relationship. You can see how to move the goods back and forth. You can see how to do passengers. You can also see, look at this. Even with all that waiting, we're making a bunch of money on this little line. And this is in 1832. We're making this kind of money. And if we were to delete about four of these trains so they could run more efficiently, they'd all be making like this guy or more. And then if we had staff on them, we haven't even gotten into staff, but if we had staff on them, they'd be making even more, especially conductors and what have you. So, all right, I'm going to stop right there. No, we made it to the state of Texas. All right, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it helps you become a better player. And I would love some feedback from you. Would you like me to do more videos where I'm talking about the game mechanics and how-tos? Because there's many, many topics we could cover. Warehouses and how to lay out clusters and all kinds of stuff. And I've covered them off and on during the various uh, videos I've made so far. But to really talk about them like this in a more of a, almost like a classroom kind of a, a way. Uh, is this useful to you? Is it too just too boring for you? If it's too boring, I, I will not be offended. Just say so. Uh, but I would like to know what you think. So uh, please leave a comment um, below. And uh, again, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it helps you become a better player. And I hope you'll join us for our next Railway Empire video. Thank you.